What was most eye-opening for me about that whole thing was the Barnleys looked within. They blamed themselves for such a tragic event that they were losing touch with their purpose and their sense of balance and harmony and keeping things in check and that sort of stuff. So they got back into doing their ceremonies a bit more. That was the day was around the day was I think that we were both involved with, right? So there was there was very much a um, a sense of coming together, which I think this particular. Um, situation that we're in right now is also manifesting in the sense of communities coming together it's interesting i think the world's got a lot to learn from places like Bali. welcome back to the seven stones indonesia podcast uh, similar to the first my name is achintia nelson and i'll be hosting for today and in this episode, we actually have Mr. Terry and Mr. Andy again with us. Hi, Tia. It's good to <laughs> see you again. What have you been doing since we last saw each other? Um, all right, so let's let's get straight into it. And um, this episode, I figured since we are still going through a huge global pandemic, COVID nineteen. Uh, we Fake might, news. <laughs> we might talk a little bit about that and how that has been like for your business and how you've dealt with that. Um, but before all this, I think it would be interesting to get a perspective of what this global pandemic has looked like in Bali, because I think not many people, it's, it's very different to how everyone else around the world has experienced this pandemic. Anyone want to elaborate? <laughs> uh, uh, We've yeah. got to be real careful about what we say here. Yeah, I, I think so we need to be politically correct <laughs> we in do. every way we talk about COVID-19, because that's important. I guess both me and Andy, we've seen Bali and Indonesia through quite a few crises, financial crises and you know natural disasters and so bombs on. Bombs and stuff. Bombs, acts of terror, yeah. But nothing like this, where where actually the whole world gets gets impacted. Uh, we were both here when H one and one and some of these other pandemics, but they never impacted to to a, a scale like what what we see now. Um, but I'm talking about in the sense that like a, a lot of people have, you know, been asking what what's it like here, and a lot of people I think are expecting like people falling into the ground in the middle of the street and things such yeah. as that but it hasn't been right in, like, in a sense it's been kind of surreal because it's not what you would expect it to be if you if you were to watch like mainstream news about what's going on around the world and then walk out of here and, and see what's going on just outside the door here it's different it's completely different mm -hmm. You know, locked down to a degree in the sense that there were various businesses that were closed but it wasn't a complete nippy kind of lockdown you know yeah i heard uh somewhere that bali did kind of a accidental sweden in which case we tried to lock down but didn't really lock down well i think indonesia is fortunate enough to not being they can't afford to lock down because mm. there's a lot of people kind of i guess a little bit like india and other countries too that a lot of their people live from their hand and to the mouth right there is no no savings and they can't take care of themselves so so that was never an option you know the social distancing the the partial not lockdowns but people staying at home and only coming out for essential food and so on went on for a while but not really went on people still went out there were still places open you could go to you know a few restaurants you could have a beer uh, you know uh, for some time you could go to the beaches eventually that closed down and now luckily they're all opening up again but but I think Andy's right. It was very different, you know. And when 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 you see news and I don't know, we don't really want to go into is it real or is it not in other parts of the world. But 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 it's like you know, it's it's almost like non-existing. The only difference is that there's obviously a lot less tourists. But other than that, life is quite quite normal. You also go outside of the tourist areas like Kuta, Tangu, you know, Bukit, and these areas. Life life in Bali goes on like. You know, normal people are farming their rice fields and taking care of their chickens and, you know, 
So what has it looked like um, impact-wise on the people? I know there's a lot of, you know, programs going about now where everyone's trying to feed a lot of people. What? Maybe I, th- I think I think um, one of the one of the things that I see here is a real strong sense of community and people coming together on a scale that that this particular crisis has kind of brought to the surface a lot more. I think one of for me one of the most attractive things about living in a place like Bali, in fact in in, in Indonesia, because I was living in Jakarta before I came here. Um, was a, there's a real strong sense of community and a strong sense of family here, which I think from where I'm from in the UK, for example, that sense of of support is something that you that you don't really get that much anymore. It's like you know, old folks are put into homes and you know you you kind of left on your own and nobody's there to help you out when you're in trouble and that sort of stuff. And I've always got on with the idea of, it, of in Indonesia of, of how that sense of family and support is really strong um, and I'm seeing a number of initiatives here right now to do with this particular crisis where people are really getting together and helping people out which I think is a real positive and a real plus you know there, there is a cloud there is a silver lining in every cloud you know what I mean and I think in, in some respects as tragic as deaths may be and, and economic situations may be, it's actually really good to see people helping each other the way they're helping each other. You know, Considering that the island is predominantly tourism based, so without the tourists, like Terry was saying, there just ain't, ain't tourists here. Without those tourists, what hotels are closing or at least rolling down on, in terms of the, the staffing that they, that they have, um, people just don't have any money. Have you, have you directly seen any um, instances where you, it, like right in front of you, you see that how, how it has affected the people, the island or businesses, especially you guys being a, a business as well? I think, I think um, what Andy was touching on, the sort of Indonesian concept of Kotong Royong community work uh, is there in the Balinese. And I think a lot of the expat community that stayed back to see COVID-19 through here uh, is people that has been here for, for quite some time and got attracted to that in the first place. So it, it's almost a natural process that we, we come together and, and work things out. Um, a lot of businesses is, is, is massively impacted and the longer this goes on, the worse it'll, it'll, it'll get. Um, but, but it's amazing, like Andy said, to see how people come together, you know, and, and, and support each other. Even though I think that the cooperation and all of this, it needs to be taken to a new level too, because Bali now is actually in some way oversupplied with food because there's no tourism, there's no one arriving to, to sort of take up on, you know, vegetables and, you know, meat and so on that gets produced here. Um, so, so I think there is a lot more work to be done to coordinate that. Uh, but business-wise, having an economy being maybe as much as 80% depending on tourism, it's it's difficult and now we're three four months into it the longer this goes the worse it's going to get um, mm. and i think we're starting to see that impact on businesses too some realized right away and they kind of closed off because they had no cash no 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 you know way of taking care of themselves um, but now you're going to see i think more and more people that has been had some savings and kind of hoping that it was going to be three four months and it looks like even though it is opening up now uh, will last quite some time and we talk about a recovery time of maybe two, three years, maybe even more. 